Hey guys, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, I have a landscaping company outside the window uh, of the office that I rent here. Uh, They're mowing the grass and I didn't want to wait. I wanted to film this video, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, we have a really cool video here for you today. Uh, yesterday, I came across this ad uh, that I'm showing you on the screen. I actually shared it into the POD Ninja's Facebook group because I thought it was such a good ad. Right. I ended up looking at the store. I ended up spending a little bit of time looking at their social media accounts as well. And this is something I do from time to time. When I find a really cool store, I like to look at everything they are doing. And I thought this would be a cool uh, video for you guys here uh, today. Now, what we're going to be doing is spying on this profitable print-on-demand store. We're going to take a look at uh, their ads, right? We'll look at all of their Facebook ads that they're running. We'll also take a look at social media pages that they have both on Facebook and on Instagram. Take a look at the store. Uh, we'll discuss why they're winning. We'll assess their profitability. Uh, we'll talk about things that they're doing that are helping them to make sales. Uh, and we'll discuss how they are doing this sort of personalization. Because you can see here uh, that they are basically taking a customer photo and turning it into an awesome uh, piece of art uh, for someone to have uh, inside of their house. And we'll jump into it right after this. All right, guys, welcome back. Like I said earlier, actually, not sure if I said it, but my name is Joe Roberts. Uh, if you're new to my channel, hello. Happy to have you here. I help people start, grow, and scale print-on-demand stores on Shopify. And like I said, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you're not new to the channel, hello again. Uh, one thing I need from you guys uh, in exchange for all of this awesome free content before we jump into this uh, is you to either like the video, comment on it, or subscribe to the channel. These videos take a little while to put together and all of your support really does help my small channel uh, to grow. Hopefully this content is helpful. If you want some more awesome resources that are free, make sure to check the links down in the description. I have a whole bunch of stuff uh, that can help you to get started. But like I said, yesterday I saw this ad uh, right here in my newsfeed. I shared it into the POD Ninjas Facebook group. This is my Facebook group, it has about 37,000 members. If you wanna check it out, there's a link down in the description. So yesterday I saw this ad, right? And and I shared it into the POD Ninjas group. Uh, and a whole bunch of people, basically I do this from time to time, I share an ad that I see and I ask people their thoughts, right? Everybody was thinking that this was a really cool looking store. Uh, some people, let me find the comment here. Uh, where is it? It's right here. Uh, Anna said, looks amazing, but the margins must not be amazing at that selling price. Uh, they actually are really good. Uh, we're gonna take a look at where uh, they might potentially be getting their print on demand products and break down exactly how much profit they're making in a little bit. Uh, but overall, this is definitely a really cool store and I wanted to spend some time going through it. Now, here is the store right here. It is called giftsshack.com. We're going to take a quick look at the homepage, and then we'll break some more things down. As you can see, they specialize in personalized products, right? They have a great product images, and they have some good social proof down here uh, on the bottom of the store. A brief overview, uh, this store specializes in personalization, right? They're taking... Uh, images from customers and then turning it into a stunning piece of art, right? And they're doing this across many different niches. You will see a whole bunch of examples of what they are doing. Uh, and they're focusing on the product, right? As their specialty, being that they make wall art, right? Uh, they also have some really unique artwork. Uh, they're taking uh, someone's image, right? And they're creating something super unique, right? They're, they're doing something that is not typically seen within the niches that they are trying. And that is something that I talk about that you need to do all the time, right? On my channel, I, ta I constantly say, hey, don't sell shirts, don't sell mugs, do something more unique for your niche. And this store is doing a great job at doing that. Now let's talk a little bit about why this store uh, is winning. Okay, there's a couple things that they're doing very well, right? The first is domain name and logo, right? The store has a professional name and a really nice logo. If we come back to the store, you can see giftshack.com. It's short and sweet. I usually do recommend people to have shorter domain names. These, This one is good, right? Also the logo, right? Up at the top of the store, you can see it's very clean, it's professional, uh, and it looks really good on the store. The colors that are present in the logo also translate throughout the rest of the store as well. Second thing that they are doing is they have really 
good product images and social proof on the store, right? They have crystal clear images that clearly show the product and a little bit about uh, their process. And they have a ton of social proof elements that are strewn throughout the store. If we come back to the store, you can see right here, they have really nice product images, like I said, uh, that show even a preview of the image before, and then what they can actually turn the image into. If you scroll down, they also have reviews, right? Social proof. That is a major part of a successful print on demand store. And they certainly have done a nice job at showcasing any reviews that they have. Another thing they've done is focused on creating really branded product pages. On this product page here, you can see that the top of the product page looks pretty typical, but as you begin to scroll down, they've done a fantastic job at making sure that their description of their product is not generic. All of the time on my channel, I talk about how you should not just use the default description from the print on demand app. So many people put a lot of work into their homepage and the branding and the way the store looks on the homepage. But then when you go to the product page, they have nothing there. And this store has done an exceptional job at carrying any brand that they had from the homepage onto their product page. In addition, the user experience of the store is also awesome. Their process is explained well and won't leave customers confused. You can see if we go back to the store right here under the how it works section, they explain exactly what the customer should expect uh, when they are working with this store to create a personalized item. So like I said, this is the ad uh, that I saw. Let's take a look at some more ads and then we'll take a look at their Facebook page and also uh, their Instagram as well because they do a nice job up there. So this is the Facebook ads library where you can look at other ads uh, that stores are running, right? And you can see as we scroll through, like I said before, they're doing this across multiple niches. Check this out. This is uh, for the firefighter niche, these three products here right? Really cool gift ideas, right? Within the firefighter niche. These are not just random personalized photos. These are actually attached to a niche. They would actually target firefighters with this type of stuff. And like I said earlier, if you're getting away from shirts and mugs and other really simple things and doing something like this, you can truly scale your print on demand store, right? We'll continue to scroll down. We have some baseball ones as well. Here's the one that I saw uh, yesterday, right? And then as we scroll down, we see some uh, that are a little bit more basic, right? Sort of for Mother's Day, uh, it seems. Uh, we have pet ones as well. And overall, all of these ads basically carry the same branding elements, right? It's showing the image of the product as well as a phone, basically showing that they can take this image here and turn it into an awesome product. Here on their uh, Facebook page, you can see that they have just about 5,000 likes here on the page. And, and honestly, they, uh, you know, they do a good job at posting photos. Here's a little bit of a copyright violation, obviously, because they are using MLB logo logos of teams. Uh, we're not here to critique them on that. We're just here to critique the brand overall. Uh, but uh, you can see that they've just done a nice job at posting various uh, pictures of products uh, that they sell, right? Really good job here uh, on the Facebook page. Everything looks professional. You can see as we scroll back up to the top, they have a nice header image, basically, again, showing uh, a standard image here on the left, and then what they can turn it into on the right. Here's their Instagram, right? Not as many followers, just about 576. But you can see as you scroll through, they have just done a nice job at posting uh, images and things like that of their products, even some uh, from customers. You can see they have this video here of somebody basically unboxing one of the canvases uh, that they were sent. This sort of thing could also be used as an ad, right? They would basically run this video as an ad and they would target it to people that love dogs, right? Because this is going to be, I think, a dog canvas, right? Where they actually took the photo of this woman's dog and turned it into something awesome, right? So anybody who's a dog lover is going to stop and, and watch this video, right? They're going to think this is super cool. And there is the product reveal of uh, the the cute dog. And and uh, that's going to get people to click it, right? Like I said, done a really good job at managing their social media, also uh, with the ads and the images uh, that they're using in them. So how profitable uh, could this store be? As you guys remember earlier, Anna uh, had commented on my post uh, that I made in the POD Ninjas group. She said right here, looks amazing, but margins must not be amazing at that selling price. So let's break that down a little bit, right? We don't know for sure uh, how profitable they are because we don't know exactly which print on demand app they are using. Uh, but we can do some guessing, right? We can go out and we can look what is available, right? So uh, their cheapest product that they have on the store right, is going to be a 12 by 18 poster, they are selling it for $34. 
you can see here if we go to one of their product pages that they have the poster it's 12 by 18 uh, and they are selling it for just 34 dollars if you go into the Printify app, that poster is going to cost you just $7.46. And if you have a Printify Premium account, you're going to save 20% on that, right? And if you guys want a free month of Printify Premium, make sure to check the link down in the description. I have a code there for you uh, that Printify has provided uh, to my audience. Uh, and like I said, you can save 20% on every order uh, that you make, right? So that means if this is only costing them $7, right? And you can see on the top, it says free shipping on orders over 150. So they're charging for the shipping. So their margin on this is about $27, which is really good, right? They can spend a whole bunch on ads to make a sale here. They're making $27 a sale before they spend anything on marketing. Their highest priced option uh, is going to be an 18 by 24 framed poster. And they're selling this for $109. You can see if we go back to the store and we select frame poster, and and we do 18 by 24, that it is $109. And just like uh, the 12 by 18 non-frame poster, if you go to Printify, you can get this for $55.54, which means that they are making almost $60 margin on this product. Like I said earlier, if you go back to the store, you can see there's free shipping on orders over 150. So they're they're charging the customer the shipping on this and they're only paying $55 for the product. And like I said earlier, if you have a Printify premium account, you're gonna save 20% on that 55, which means that it's really like 44 or something like that, which brings you like a $70 margin or so. So uh, again, Anna, like I said, you, you weren't sure about the margin. This store is crushing it, right? Even if they're making just a couple of sales a day, that's gonna add up relatively quickly. So how are they doing this, right? They are taking artwork uh, from customers and they're turning it into something really cool, right? It's not as complicated as you might think, right? There's a couple options. The simplest uh, is it is a one person team, right? It is one person running the store. They are receiving the artwork for the cust from the customer and they're making the new design file themselves and then they are re-uploading it to whatever print on demand app they're using, creating a manual order for the customer with uh, the new design. Right, you can see, if you go back to the store, basically what they're doing is they're taking the image that the customer has provided and they are just adding a background and turning it into a little bit of a cartoon. There are some really advanced ways that you can do this that involve a lot more manual work. There's also something called a Photoshop action, which I'm not really gonna get too much into, but it's basically like an Instagram filter, right? Think about it. When you are uploading a photo to Instagram, you can change the way that it looks. There are things like that inside of Photoshop that allow you to essentially do that add a background to the photo as well. Uh, and someone could be using something as simple as that and creating an image like this for their clients in about 30 seconds or less. The other option is a little bit more complicated, uh, is a multi-person team, right? It is one person or two people that kind of started this, this, uh, this store. And they've also gone and hired designers, right? They've gone on maybe Fiverr or Upwork and found some freelance designers who are going to handle all of the edits. Again, maybe they are doing it from scratch and really putting a lot of time into the artwork or Again, maybe they are using a simple Photoshop action, which basically serves as an Instagram filter to create something like this. And again, they would, uh, when the file is done, they would re-upload it and create a manual order uh, for the customer with the new design. There's also going to be some background tech that they're going to have to have, right? Apps on the store. They're going to need to have an app to receive the artwork. You can see if we go back to the store here that it actually allows us to click here and upload a file, right? Upload our image. They're going to, this is done by using an app. If you go into the Shopify app store, there's going to be dozens that you can choose from that are going to allow you uh, to do something like this, right? They're also uh, maybe going to use an app that is going to show uh, a preview right after someone places the order and the new design is created there they want to make sure that the customer is happy with it right so they're going to use some sort of an app that's going to deliver uh, that fixed or uh, redone artwork to the customer to get approved before they actually submit the new design to their print on demand app to have it printed so like I said, overall, this store, giftshack.com, uh, really simple business model, right? Taking photos from customers, turning it into uh, really cool stuff. And like I said, they're doing this across uh, so many uh, different niches. They don't even really, it doesn't even really seem like they have a lot of them uh, visible here because here's the pet portrait, here's the people's painting. I mean, I guess no matter what image somebody uploads, that becomes uh, the niche. So when you're seeing things uh, on the ad library like this, uh, which shows firefighters, they're just creating some 
something like this to show them that they could make it a firefighter. If we click the link, it actually is just going to bring us uh, to a page. Oh, it looks like they did actually set up uh, a separate a separate one that's not accessible because when we were here on the homepage, uh, they, their menu doesn't really allow you uh, to get to that page. But that's the, that's besides the point, right? Like I said, this store overall is definitely doing a fantastic job at not only creating a great looking store, but also creating awesome product concepts, right? You guys know, if you follow my content, I talk about all the time that the only thing that matters with a print on demand store is what you are actually selling, right? Your offer, your, your niche, your product choice, and your design. If you can nail the perfect combination of those three things, you are going to be much more likely to succeed, right? If you don't have a winning product, if you don't choose a good niche, if you don't choose a good product, and if you don't make a good design, uh, you're not going to succeed, right? Nothing you do with your ads or your store or your social media or anything is going to change that. You need to have a winning product like this store uh, does here. And if you guys want some help with this, please check out the print on demand challenge. The link is down in the description. It's a 14 day program uh, where you can work directly with me to create a winning print on demand product like what you are seeing here sold uh, by giftshack.com. Uh, like I said, check it out. The link's down in the description. Uh, the next round of the challenge is going to be starting soon. It's a 14 day coaching program where you'll get access uh, to me directly for personalized support. And you'll also go through 14 days of daily training to help you to create your winning product. So like I said, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video earlier. Drop a like on it if you watched it this far, uh, and I will see you guys in the next video.